based on extensive research from the previous NEET PG examinations, from the FMG examinations, I could figure out that there are so many questions asked from certain topics, and these topics tend to be very high yield topics. Today, the topic selected is erythema because a lot many clinical based questions have been asked on erythema, and I will be taking you through the topic in the most palatable manner. So as far as erythemas are concerned, you have to remember that there are multiple types of erythema and the first and the foremost, which happens to be very important, is erythema chronica migrans. Now, as far as erythema chronica migrans is concerned, you have to remember that there is one disease which we give the name as Lyme's disease. And this Lyme's disease, many important questions have been asked from this disease. And this Lyme's disease, you have to remember that it is a tick-borne illness. Now, what is the causative organism? It is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi, and you have to remember this fact. So, Lyme's disease is one important disease in which you have a derm dermatological manifestation in the form of erythema. And what is this type of erythema and what are the features of this type of erythema? You have to remember that this erythema just affects most commonly the axilla, the inguinal regions. In addition, there is this popliteal fossa at the back of the knee joint and it can affect the popliteal fossa as well. And sometimes it can affect the belt area, the waistline, I mean to say. Now, what is the characteristic of these lesions of erythema chronica migrans? You have to remember that they are not painful. They are usually painless but there can be an itching or a burning sensation associated with these lesions, you have to remember. And they can be sometimes a bit increased in temperature, that means hot to touch. Now, they are characterized by absence of necrosis or vesiculation, usually. So, this thing you have to remember, edema chronica migrans associated with Lyme's disease caused by Borrelia burgdorferi and the characteristic lesions at the axilla, inguinal regions, the popliteal fossa and the waist and they being usually painless but having a burning or itching sensation. Now as far as the figure is concerned, I just told you the common sites and this is the waistline, the belt area where in here we have got this edema chronica migrans lesion over here. Now you can have a look at the other figure as well. You can see a central clear area and a ring of edema. And this is a characteristic feature of edema chronica migrans because an image based question can be asked from this clinical scenario, you may be given a clinical scenario of a tick bite and then, then a figure and then you have to draw the conclusion. So this is something about erythema chronica migrans. Now we have got another type of erythema which we give the name as erythema igni. Now you have to remember igni is something concerned with fire and uh, people who are prolonged, who are exposed to prolonged temperatures, who just warm themselves, keep themselves uh, very near to the source of heat, whether it is the heat in the form of a flame or it is the radiation. So you can have repeated exposure to heat or infrared radiation especially. And these people just especially in cold uh, climate, they just place themselves at near the fires and what they can do, they expose their bag, they expose their areas and then these areas can get a type of a erythema which is characterized by a reticular uh, pattern. In addition to reticular pattern, it is con it is concerned also with hyperpigmentation. So you can have pigmented and reticular lesions, and these are very important things because the next figure will show you the exact description among this. This is this is the area which I just mentioned over here. So this is a reticular. Reticular means network, and network you can see this network like lesions, and you can see hyperpigmentation. You can just visibly track the reticular pattern on the back. So this patient most probably has exposed his back to the hot temperature and as a result of which he has got erythema 
ib agni lesions in a similar manner you can have this thing this reticular pattern which is shown over here characteristic of erythema ib agni now we have to remember that it is usually a benign condition but it's sometimes due to chronic exposure and these can turn into malignant and uh, so this edema ib igni in almost 5 to 15 percent of the cases it can turn into a malignant lesion so you have to remember this thing as well uh edema gyratum repens now this happens to be a very important uh, term especially for oncologists and especially in medicine uh, people remember these things and this is very important from my experience of USMLE examinations from neat PG examinations this question has been asked many a times why because this gyratum repens erythema is usually associated with lung cancers and not only lung cancers you can see that the first thing it's written or their bronchogenic CA, then the esophageal and the breast. So erythema gyratum repens is characteristically associated with lung CA, esophageal CA, and breast CA. Um, that means it is associated with internal malignancies, the first point shown over here. But it is not always associated with malignancy. It can be found in absence of malignancies as well. And what is the characteristic of these lesions? These lesions have got a concentric, in the form of concentric rings, migrating erythematous plaques, and progressively, rapidly, increasing and covering a wide surface area so large percentage of the body surface area will be covered now you can have a look at the figure below and this is a characteristic erythema chronicum migrans uh, gyratum repens patch so over here this is erythema gyratum repens you can see characteristic uh, appearance and you can have a look at this and you can remember it it's in the form of concentric rings and it can progress to plaques and it is rapidly progressing and it can increase involve to a involve and spread to a vast area so this is characteristically a term which is asked and you can get an image based question based on this type of erythema now erythema nodosum, some a common uh, question asked in neat pg and fmg examinations why i have been seeing this question rep asked many a times repeatedly high yield uh, uh, repeater so now what is erythema nodosum? basically erythema nodosum is a delay type of hypersensitivity reaction and it presents in the form of tender painful and Eridematous nodules usually below the knee on the shin aspect, anterior aspect of tibia, the area which is covered by the skin on the anterior aspect of tibia. We have got this painful, tender, hot, inflamed lesions which are eridematous. And one important thing is that it is present in a versatile number of conditions. That means many drugs, many infections, many uh, sources can be associated with erythema nodosum. And classically, they give you this example with association of so uh, sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis and erythema nodosum happen to be an uh, examiner's favorite association. Uh, but you have to remember that many infections, as I previously mentioned, many drugs, pregnancy as well is a uh, normal condition and malignancy. Many malignancies are associated with erythema nodosum. So what you have, remember this picture and you will just not forget it. So these are the erythema nodosum lesions over here on the shin. And two of them over here and you can see erythema over there. They present pain, as painful lesions usually on the shin. That's important. Associations I just mentioned you. Erythema multiforme uh, EM, um, very important and acute immune mediated condition and you have to remember some important features of erythema multiforme that it is characterized by cutaneous lesions and usually the mucosa are not involved in the first place but the lesions are characteristically target lesions or iris lesions you have to remember these two terms target lesions happen to be a characteristic feature of em and these are also given the name as iris lesions now there can be mucosal involvement as well. You can have the mucosa involved and you have to remember the association. Like in the previous condition, they can be associated with a whole range of viral, bacterial, recursional infections as well. Now, certain drugs can also cause erythema multiforme. 
two things you have to remember in erythema multiforme. One is the Stevens-Johnson syndrome and another is the TANS, toxic epidermal necrosis. So as far as Stevens-Johnson syndrome is concerned, you have to remember that Stevens-Johnson syndrome happens to be associated with Steven Johnson syndrome happens to be associated with mucosal involvement. You can have the involvement of the oral mucosae and the mucosae elsewhere and in toxic epidermal necrosis, it is a more rapidly progressing uh, uh, clinical condition in which you can have large areas of denudation of the skin. That means the skin will be removed in layers and you can have the, in the body, you can have large areas where the skin, there will be epidermal necrosis. So the epidermis of the skin skin would be the topmost layer would be denuded and that will expose a person to a lot of organisms and there can be rapidly progressive infection later on so these are two important facts associated with erythema multiforme now over here you have these lesions over here so these are the erythema multiforme lesions. So these are the erythema multiforme lesions and you have to remember the characteristic association which I just mentioned. Now, after that, erythema toxicum neonaturum. Uh, you may be very much afraid because of this term, but you have to remember that this is just a benign condition. Nothing to worry about. Only thing is that you have to diagnose it properly. And what is this erythema toxicum neonaturum? It is a transient condition. I told you, it comes and it goes of its own without any medication as well. But the ability of a pediatrician or a neonatologist to just diagnose this condition is very important. And how does it present? It presents as erythematous macules and papules. And in some cases, it can appear as pustules once there's a super added inflammation. But mostly it is restricted to erythematous macules or papules. And it is common in the first two weeks, two to three weeks after birth, and especially in the first week. So the onset is from birth to two weeks, 14 days. And most oddly, it is seen in the first week of life. Alive and it is a very common clinical condition. You can see that it's present in many of the new nets. So over here you can see these are the lesions. These are the lesions of erythema toxicum neonatorum. So this is one clinical condition, and uh, you do not find this um, if you just have a uh, scenario of this thing. Erythema toxicum neonatorum. You have to remember that it is usually a condition associated with neonates. Erythema marginatum. Now, erythema marginatum is one clinical condition. You have to remember that there is this inflammation, which we give the name as rheumatic fever, which is usually caused by the streptococcus. And rheumatic fever has got multiple manifestations, um, cardiological manifestations, the arthritic manifestation, but there's a dermatological manifestation, which we give the name as erythema marg marginatum. So it is associated with acute rheumatic fever. It is not associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I posed the MCQ last time, uh, can I giving a confusing term rheumatoid arthritis rheumatic, and many of the students just uh, labeled it as rheumatoid arthritis but it is the acute rheumatic fever not rheumatoid arthritis so these lesions are pink and red so these regions are pink and red and they are not present on the face they are usually present on the trunk so this is important and they are clear in the center and the erythema extends around the margins which will be being clear to you in the next diagram so erythema marginatum are non pleuritic they do not itch they are red or pinkish in color and you can see over here these are the erythema marginatum lesions these are the erythema marginatum lesions you can see the central clearing which is there and the peripheral margin is reddish so this is erythema marginatum a clinical condition you have to remember because image-based questions IBQs are frequently asked. Uh, this is another example of erythema marginate. Now erythema necrotic migrants. Um, Again, uh, in surgery, you come across many clinical conditions, insulinoma, uh, glucagonoma, gastronoma, uh, pheochromocytoma, carcinoid tumors. But one association happens to be asked many a times, erythema necrolytica migrans, and you have to remember its association with glucagonoma. There is this tumor in which there is hypersecretion of glucagon, and glucagonoma is associated with this 
illegal condition of erythema necrolytica migrans. This is asked. This has been asked in USMLE in neat PG many a times. And what is the characteristic feature that it is a paraneoplastic syndrome? This is a dermatological manifestation. This happens to be a paraneoplastic component of glucogonoma. And what is this? It presents a scaly erosive annular plaques or pustules and blisters. This is again a condition which can progress rapidly and it is usually present around the mouth region. Now have a look at the figure below over here. So this is you can see the lesions of this typical clinical entity. The lesions are clustered around the mouth and they happen to be a bit scaly and then they happen to be erosive as well. You can see denuded parts of the skin over there and this erythema necroliticum migrans you have to remember in any case for your FMG or need PG examinations. Now erythema infectiosum. Erythema infectiosum happens to be somewhat um, examiner's favorite. Why? Because it is associated with certain things of interest and what are these things of interest remember the fifth disease remember parvovirus remember the slapped cheek appearance characteristically asked previously as one-liners maybe you might be getting one-liners in these exams as well so fifth disease a synonymous of erythema infectiosum now parvovirus i mentioned you then the slab cheek appearance i told you now erythema infectiosum derives name because it is infectious it is contagious so that's important it can spread now, what is the virus which causes parvovirus and which subtype of parvovirus B19? That's important. So, erythema infectiosum is caused by parvovirus B19 and it is also given the name of fifth disease and it's contagious. And the facial rash is characteristic because it is seen on the part of the cheek where you slap most commonly and you lay a and print of that on the cheek. So, over here, the figure will be, remember this figure and the thing is done done and over here this is it this is the area where one would slap his friend his enemy anybody so this is the area so especially in case, this case this area of the cheek it gives as the appearance there's an erythema around this area and that is why it is given the name a slap cheek appearance so this is another important thing you have to remember about erythema infectiosum now it is not restricted to the cheek area only, but you can have the wide separate lesions on the limbs. You can have the spread lesions on the abdomen as well. So this is something you have to remember as a component of the erythema, erythema infectious as well. Um, by now, the erythemas must have been a bit clear to you. Only points you have to remember is that which erythema is associated with which organism, say erythema chronica migrans, say the last one I mentioned you, erythema infectiosum, so Borrelia, Burgdorf, Ferry, and parvovirus, where they come into play. Then you have to remember the features of the erythema, which are the paraneoplastic manifestations, how do they present, what are the types of lesions, and the image which I have just shown you. So this is all about erythemas and I hope this class has just cleared your concepts of medicine, dermatology and pathology associated with various types of erythemas. I wish you best of luck for your exams. Thanks a lot.